Hey guys, it's Callista. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about gemming. So a few of you have reached out to me uh, within the game, on YouTube, on Instagram, Twitter, just asking a lot of questions around jewels and gemming. So I wanted to make sure that we could do kind of a high level, just comprehensive how to, uh, and then walk you guys through an exercise that I'm going to be doing on my own account, um, just re-gemming, figuring out which gems I can improve, and then putting those in my gear. So the very first piece of advice that I would give uh, to anyone who is new to the gemming piece of the game is make sure that you're not jumping the gun. So you really shouldn't be thinking about gemming anything until you've decided on what your go-to war gear is going to be. Now, uh, I recommend waiting until you have a higher level hero in the high 50s before you decide what your go-to war gear is going to be. There's plenty of videos out there on war gear. Definitely take a look at those. Uh, but I would recommend figuring that out. And then step two is figuring out your gemming situation. Now, before you start to gem and before you even start thinking about your war gear, you should really think about uh, what your troop type specialization is going to be. And I've mentioned this in other videos before, but I really recommend picking two troop types that are going to be kind of your strongest types. The reason that I don't recommend going mixed or doing all is because it's, it's virtually impossible. So if you look at your talent tree, you at level 60 are going to have a certain amount of points that you can dedicate to your different troop types and improving their attack. Now, there is no way that you can max out all of them, but you can do a pretty damn good job maxing out two of them or getting very close to max. Uh, so I recommend going for two, two troop types. Now, what those types are doesn't really matter. It is up to you. I don't recommend going with only one because it would be very, very easy to counter you. If you're thinking about troop composition, I just want to say this because I don't want any miscommunication or misconceptions out there. Let's assume that you're like me and you decided that cavalry and infantry are really going to be your specializations. Now, something that I want to make sure you guys are cognizant of is when you look at my troop composition in terms of the troops that I have created, it does not mean that I do not have any ranged troops. I do not recommend that. You should always have all troop, troop types because you want to make sure that you're able to effectively defend. Now, this becomes really important regardless of the level you are, unless you are kind of unattackable. And I think unattackable, you're going to need to be at... I don't know, like over 800 million attack, right? Where somebody would be like, I don't want to rally this person. Not, I definitely don't want to solo them. So for the most part, everyone should really have all troop types, but they should only be focusing on boosting two troop types. Um, and whether you want to go ranged cav, cav infantry, whatever, totally up to you, but make sure that you spec your talent tree appropriately, that you then have the right war gear that is boosting those troop types, and that then third piece you have the right gems so as I mentioned before I tend to focus on cavalry and infantry uh, you can kind of see that's where primarily my gear is focused on I do have some gear that does provide boosts across all uh, troop types I love that. I think that's very important. I also have some gear that will also provide quite a few army level boosts. And I've mentioned this before, army level boosts are so important and so super helpful. So you can see this is a really expensive champ edge sword. It's champion gear, uh, but you can see that it does have army boost at the very bottom, um, army boost for um, HP attack and defense. Um, some pieces of gear will have kind of a mix uh, where you'll have, for example, this one has infantry defense, it has some ranged attack, right? Uh, but it also has really great army level boost. So to me, it made sense, even though it's boosting range, I still have ranged troops. And if you're sending me a bunch of calves, range is really what's going to do the job. So I want to make sure that I'm still giving them a little bit of love, right? But not... I'm not focusing my gear and my gems around that, but I am giving them like, you know, a little bit of love here and there. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So uh, that's kind of high level tips. Now going into your cabinet and specifically into your jewel fusion, um, I have de-gemmed a lot of my gear uh, to do this exercise and to be able to show you guys. But there are going to be certain gems that I am definitely going to put on the do not recommend list. Whether you want to listen is up to you, right? Like my job, what I see myself doing is just giving you guys some tips and then you guys, based on your knowledge and your own personal experience, you're going to make decisions based on that. But I would say 
that I would not recommend necessarily focusing on any gems that are giving you uh, trap boosts. For example, this trap defense jewel that I'm clicking, I don't recommend gemming that. Even if it was gold, I, I probably wouldn't put it in my gear. Uh, I don't recommend wall boosts. So anything around traps, around walls, and around siege, I do not recommend those jewels going into your gear. Uh, I don't know if other people will disagree, but I think you only have a certain number of slots per gear that you can gem, and you want to make sure that you're making every single slot work super duper hard for you. Uh, we're, you know, wasting those slots on things like trap jewels and wall jewels and sea jewels probably doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense. I would definitely recommend thinking about your two main troop types, making sure you heavy up on that, and then wherever you have gaps, putting in that additional third troop type uh, to make sure that you're giving it some buffs so that you do have an effective counter against all three troops. Um, so that would be kind of a high level recommendation here. Uh, the second recommendation would be around making sure that when you're kind of deciding what you're going to be gemming, that you're taking all your jewels and kind of boosting them up, right? You don't want to gem a bunch of small jewels. You don't want to gem a bunch of, you know, white jewels, for example. So you want to make sure that you're going through and that you're looking at each jewel type um, and bumping it up. You need four jewels of a specific jewel type for it to get to the next level and evolve. So you can see here we had four whites, we moved them to green. Now all of a sudden we have enough green. We can move that over to blue. And from blue we're going to get to purple, right? Super exciting because that's cap defense plus 12%. So buff. So you want to make sure you're doing this throughout uh, all your jewels. Um, and this is where everything counts, right? So you could say, oh yeah, I don't think I have enough. You want to make sure you go through the exercise of counting and checking because it's a tremendous loss if you don't do it. Um, so right here, this is hella exciting. Uh, I'm able to get a golden attack jewel. So I'm super pumped about that, guys. Sorry, I'm totally cheesing out. Um, so I'm super excited about that. That's really great. Uh, I also, you're going to notice, have some jewels that are not super obvious in terms of what they do. So something like the Nacero's jewel, um, which gives a food production and army capacity. The Gargantua jewel, which gives you cavalry attack and defense. This is pretty cool, but you're going to see that the attack and defense boost, because it is giving you both, it gives you very little. So even if you had a golden Gargantuan jewel, you would get 10%. That's awesome, but it's, it takes a lot of work to get there. Uh, another one are the champion jewels that you get from your champ gear. I have a blue one. I have a gold one that's also, uh, right now, it's gemmed. And this gives you travel speed as well as army max HP. Uh, and you can see those really help when you're when you're being attacked and you see those armies moving so quickly and you're like, did they just really use all those wings sometimes? Um, their base speed can be quite high and you'll see that with some of the really, really big players. I have a Griffin Jewel, which gives you trap attack and trap defense. As I mentioned before, don't recommend traps, so don't recommend Griffin Jewels. Then I have a Worm Jewel, which if you're ranged, is actually pretty cool. If you're a ranged spec, it does give you ranged attack and defense, similar to uh, the other jewel that we were looking at. Not this one, but the Gargantua Jewel, which gives you the cavalry piece of that. Um, we also have a Terror Jewel, which gives you the infantry boost level of that. Again, this at a gold is fantastic. At a blue, it's still pretty good because, again, it's giving you both the attack and the defense. And for the most part, you're going to notice that jewels give you one or the other when you're thinking about those specific ones. Um, so, have looked quickly through uh, my cabinet. Um, I don't think I have anything else that I would necessarily want to evolve. Uh, so, I think for now, I can kind of leave it at that. Another thing that comes up is devolving it. So, you could potentially... Well, I have a gold one, which gives me plus 20. Maybe I could just put it, slot in four different cav attack jewels, um, and instead of 20, you're going to get a plus 48% uh, boost, which is fantastic. So think about that, right? Um, this is going to depend on a few things. It's going to depend on how many spaces you have. So for example, for my for this one, I'm probably going to leave it last to see uh, what I have. I think right now I don't have any purple cav attack jewels, but I have one blue. Uh, so that means per uh, war item, you can't have more than one of one specific type of gem. So you can't necessarily put three cav attack jewels in one piece of 
uh, gear, you can do that across multiple pieces of gear, but it's one per item. So that's important to keep in mind. So I would actually recommend, once you kind of do this, and doing this is free, like fusing it, defusing it, you can have tons of fun doing this. Um, if you haven't gemmed a golden piece, it is sometimes best to de-gem it, and having four of those boosts are going to stack. So think about that, again. Uh, I think purple jewels are by far fantastic, and if you have a lot of them, you can get such a huge boost because 20% versus 48% is huge, right? So I'm going to go in there, um, and I'm going to go ahead um, and defuse them. So now I have four purples as opposed to the one golden. I was super excited about the golden, but I'm excited about the golden because that means I have enough to have four purple jewels, right? Um, now, if you have a ton of... If you're at the level where you have a lot of golden gems and you don't necessarily need to worry about each of like each specific boost, more power to you. I, I think it, you have to be playing this for a long time and invest a ton of money to be there. Um, but for the most part, this is going to be really helpful. When you're thinking about the blue jewels, the blue give a plus six um, compared to your plus 12. It is a big difference, right? And then green plus three. So a question that comes up is, when you're pay to play, uh, when do you start gemming? And when you're free to play, when do you start gemming? If you're free to play, needing to pull out a jewel is incredibly expensive. So if you, and I can show you guys, uh, let's see. So you can kind of see when you're trying to pull out a jewel, and this one's gonna scare people, but let's do this one. So let's click that, let's say it's okay. Let's click remove. So you can see the extract jewel screen there, and you can see how expensive it can get to extract certain number, certain color jewels. So you can see a common jewel is green, it's a thousand to pull it out. A blue one is rare, it's 2,000. The purple ones are 3,000 per jewel to be able to pull it out. Now you can pull it out and destroy it. Never would I recommend destroying anything. I mean, I haven't even destroyed my wall and my trap boost jewels, which I technically could. I've never, um, I've never um, gemmed them or used them in gear, so I haven't had to extract them. But if I did, I probably would be pulling. Um, I would just be removing them and not paying. Now, a golden gem is going to be four thousand. So eight pieces of gear here, guys. That I could put a purple cav attack in every single one. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually pay the price, pay 4,000 gems and pull it. Did it pull? No. I'm going to pay 4,000 gems and pull it. Ouch. And devolve that one as well because I do have eight pieces of gear where I could put cav attack. And that's huge. It's going to make my cav incredibly, incredibly strong. And I can show you guys, just so you can take a quick look at what the buffs look like. So right now, this is what the buffs look like. They're pretty low. Um, you can see infantry and cavalry have the higher ones, uh, but I don't have any jewels. So you can. I want you guys to remember some of those numbers. So 234% for infantry, 240 for cav. And you're gonna see it post gemming what those boosts are going to look like. It'll be a big, big difference, okay? So I'm going to go back into the cabinet and into the jewel section and I'm going to grab my beautiful golden gem and I'm going to divide it. So now I have eight, right? That's pretty cool. That's a plus 96% cav attack boost. That is hella cool, man. So that's super exciting. Um, I'm pumped by that. That's a good thing. Another p jewel that I have in here that I will show you that I saved just to do this with you guys so you guys can share my pain is the champ jewel. So that gives you a 20% travel speed and a 15% max HP. This is going to be the same situation where dividing this is going to be more impactful because you can stack your percentages than slapping in that golden jewel, okay? So we're going to go into jewel fusion see where it is over here and we're going to devolve it and now all of a sudden you're gonna see instead of the travel speed plus 20 we're gonna have a plus 40 our max HP is going to be plus 30 versus plus 15 so double right the downside to this is we're taking up slots right so we have to just be really cognizant of how many slots we're going to have left because that's the amount of slots that we're going to need to play with in terms of the, the rest of the jewels that we have. 
Uh, but these, because the stack is so intensely helpful, it makes sense to break it apart as opposed to gemming one big golden jewel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly do this and I will be right back. Hey guys, I am back. So what have I done so far? So what I did was go through each uh, equipment piece that I had and go ahead and gem it. So the first thing that I did was the cavalry attack gems. Remember we had two golden ones and we divided them up into eight uh, purple ones. I went ahead and gemmed those across all the gear and you can see that here. Right, so that very first jewel. And then I did the same thing with the champion jewels. We had one golden one, I went ahead and split that apart and was able to put those in four pieces. And then for the leftover um, slots that I had, I went ahead and put in, again, remember what my focus is, infantry and cavalry. So wherever I could, I put in infantry and cavalry jewels. Um, and then after I did that, I had a couple of purple ranged jewels that I put in there again, just to make sure that I have um, all my bases covered. So you can kind of see what I have here. You have the cavalry attack jewel that you guys saw. I had a couple of infantry attack jewels, also purple and an infantry defense jewel. Very important stuff. You can kind of see what the stats look like at the bottom. Now, the big moment of truth. Let's take a look at what the boosts look like post gemming. All right. So that's what the boosts look like, which is pretty good. Um, you can see that our infantry attack went up, our cav broke 300, which is great. Um, so pretty decent, uh, could work on a couple of things, I think, and this is all from an attack perspective, right? And you can see what the army boosts look like down below. Um, army boost with the leader deployed is plus 193, the army defense is plus 276, and my army max HP is plus 376. I was pretty used to timing based on the golden champ jewel that I had. And now with the four purple jewels, my travel speed has stacked. So I'm going to be moving quicker. So I just need to be better about timing when I'm attacking, when their armies are coming back. And you can see that in some of the KVK videos that I've done, uh, timing is everything for some of this stuff. So as I'm seeing this, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna need to work on that, which is cool. All good. Uh, it's, you know, you're always learning in this game. So guys, that is all I wanted to show you guys. I was gonna be doing this gemming exercise for my own anyway, uh, so just figured I'd record it, uh, show it to you guys, so you guys can kinda see what I was doing. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, I always try to respond to any questions that you guys have. I know that there can sometimes be, uh, it can sometimes feel really overwhelming, right? Like all the stuff that you have to do in this game. So if I can help you guys, love to, you can reach me on Twitter, Instagram, within Lords Mobile. You can reach me through YouTube uh, via the comment section. So again, I hope this was helpful. Um, I would love to hear any advice that you guys have in the comments, right? Because we're all here to help each other. So feel free to post anything that makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.